Got a nice gloomy Monday, but we're back on site and we're gonna go ahead and start laying some of this rock wool down. This is gonna be the floor insulation. Then we've got plastic, mesh, and the radiant tubing. Just because we're getting later in the year, we are trying to get that done even though the frame is not fully done, nor is the sheathing on, which typically we like to get it sheathed. But with this project specifically, this concrete is all gonna get covered with floor finishes. So we're not as worried about any sort of potential scuffing or marking of the concrete like we normally would when the finish is the concrete. So that's why a lot of times you don't see concrete slabs poured before we start. We're actually gonna have Dan from Rockwell out here. He's gonna help us, give us any insight on the product because this is the first time that we've ever used it as a subgrade application. We've used it in wall cavities for obviously your thermal insulation and sound protection. So what we're gonna be using is the Comfort Board 80. This is a three inch thick and um, yeah, comes in four by eight sheets. So it should be pretty darn easy to install and um, that'll go up against this outside foam insulation that's giving us a thermal uh, break between the concrete and the interior here of our slab. So we're gonna go ahead and get set up, start installing this. Should go down pretty easy. There are obviously lots of pipes that we've got to cut around and hopefully we can do a good job. Rockwell did send me out uh, as part of their R class. I got this sweet little knife, make some cuts and I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and bust out one of the old hand jigsaw, sawzall looking things. I think they call them like a hacksaw. And I just threw a new general purpose Diablo on, should cut the stuff no problem and that should be nice and comfortable to use. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead, get this started. So I'm just taking the high spots out where we've walked. I mean, it's pretty decent. I'm more worried about along the edges here. I like our gravel rake, Greg's idea. Just because up along the edges, you get kind of a, I don't know, just a little bit extra there along the edges and I just wanna make sure that it's nice and flat. The comfort board does have some flex to it so it's gonna lay down, but let's go ahead and bring some in, Greg. We'll see, see what it's like. Kind of reminds me of cutting out Kaizen foam in your, uh, your cases, Greg. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna kinda go like so. Bro, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So, wow, that is that is gonna be so much better than walking on styrofoam. Huh. All right, let's go, that's, that's easy, man. This is when a track saw would be nice, huh? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Like a glove. So hey, how about we just start with that one footer and that'll just offset our seams. Dude, this ain't gonna fly in the wind either. I was concerned that maybe we'd have to get it covered up and- You have to have so much uplift. Yeah, this stuff is pretty solid. Sixty-nine and three quarters, seven eighths. We'll go with the tight measurement. We'll get to squeeze in there. Kind of do the same thing. Let's we'll go up and then Snug as a bug in a rug, tight like a glove. All right, where's our cutoff? Right Love it. Wait, dude, you're, you're not the right way up. It's gotta be flipped over. There, now we can see the R12. That way people know that we got an R12 in the, in the floor. Come on, Greg. It's the important things, dude. Man, all this insulation is making me warm. 
I just can't believe how dense this stuff is, man. Or the fact that it is literally rock. How about that? Nineteen and a half. So this one's going to be a little bit different. It's going to probably be most of this, but then this is smaller pipe to a bigger pipe, something like that. Perfect. I like it tight, dude. Let's hit it. All right, hopefully that's good. I know this one's probably gonna be a little tight, but with the foam around these pipes, it should hopefully be good. Next thing I'm gonna do before I actually put this in is I'm just gonna make sure that the gravel is not too high around these pipes, which always seems to be the case just because it's hard to flatten out the gravel, I guess, for guys, I don't know. All right, All right buddy. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's not bad, huh? <laughs> All right, so Dan here just showed up, and Dan, I met you JLC Live. JLC Live. And that is where I first realized that I think rock wool or, you know, I guess we could just say mineral wool products. Stone wool. Yeah. Stone wool products are a good idea in a lot of applications. And we're actually here using rock wool in the subgrade. We are going to be using it on the walls, the roof, or I guess uh, the attic space. So this whole house that we are building is going to be fully insulated. But Dan here has come out. He has a nice layover in Chicago, and he's going to help us do some install. How do you think we're doing so far? I mean, So far, it's going great. I mean, it's not brick hard. pattern, it is. It's stone simple. It goes in, you just lay it in. Yeah. Now, people are probably wondering, we're putting, I mean, this is, you know, it's pretty firm, it's pretty sturdy, but it's an insulation, unlike most people see, totally okay to be at subgrade mm -hmm. because moisture it's, is... Yeah, moisture will go right through it. It's a drainage plane. It's if stone. it's up vertically, it's stone. Yeah. So, yeah. It's really hard to believe that this is actually made from stone. Maybe someday we'll get to see the process. Yes. That would be cool. I'm sure you guys would really enjoy that. Make sure you drop a comment down below. And uh, if there's a lot of people, maybe Dan can work that out. Uh, we always love a good factory tour. But um, this is a 3-inch R12. And anything else you want to say about Rockwell? Maybe? So I think the biggest thing for subterranean really is the fact that it's uh, termite resistant. Termites don't like the material. Really? Yeah. Well, I did not know that. I mean, we do not really have termite issues very much. People always ask us about that, especially our Australian followers. They yeah. must be big over there. Um, but, you know, we don't have to worry about that. That's why you see wood fairly close contact to the ground. But that's good to know for people that are in that situation. I just like using this product day one of using it because it's much more comfortable to walk on than when you have that foam product. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So we're gonna we're gonna get going on this. Hopefully, Dan's got some tips or maybe some things that will help you guys with your install if you go this route. And obviously, if you wanted more information, Dan, just check out Rockwell or anywhere specific. Um, honestly, uh, I'm available to everybody, so you can shoot me an email. Uh, okay. Dan period Edelman at Rockwell.com. I'll make sure to put that down below into the uh, show notes. Yeah. Or if you want more localized service, uh, we have the R Class Builder Program that basically you just go into rclass.rockwell.com and you'll submit the form and you'll be contacted by either myself or one of my team members. Cool. Yeah. All right. We should probably get back to work, huh? Yeah. All right, because I think the concrete guy's showing up in a little bit. He's got his uh, mesh to go over top because I was worried about us doing this and then wind potentially picking up because we are out here in the middle of nowhere. But that's another thing, Dan. There is no worry about laying this stuff and the wind flopping it out because it's it goes together really tight. It has a little bit of compression so you can tight fit all the edges. And uh, I think, I don't know, what would you say one of these weighs? Uh, 40 pounds? 64 pounds. 64 pounds. So I really don't see the wind grabbing this very easily, especially inside of a footing wall like we are building in 
right here. So 34 and 7 8 to 39 and 7 8 and we're going to cut that in a U off the end about 9 and 3 quarters. It's like it grew there, right, Greg? Okay, here, right? you don't have to do it by yourself, Dan. Oh, I'm good. Oh, you're, you're gonna make me do it myself. So the whole point is, yes, the concrete will compress it slightly, but it doesn't, it's not like it's an added compression over time. How much do you think that this will compress? Uh, is there really any? nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah, really, it's one of those things that point pressure versus Greg. dispersed load. Yeah. Um, and that's really the, like if I was wearing high heel shoes on here right now. You yeah, poke right through, through it. Yeah. But I'm not. I almost did. True. Hearing. I'm pretty sure there's no load on the motor at all. Putting up against that first, and then you can. So here's, if you want, you could actually get, and again, if you. Oh, to stop it from uh, breaking out? Yeah. That makes sense. So if you just put that right on there, and then you can really just... I just love that tight fit, man. And it kind of like pushes everything back and helps close a lot of these joints that might even be open, but it's pretty darn good. Nice tip, Dan. It's definitely compression fitting. Yeah. Yes. We like compression fit. Oh, a track saw would be really sweet. That nine, that 10 inch Ma Makita, Greg. You want to mark first? You know, Dan, I'll say we do get some guys and you are one of the few that has come out and actually hung out and worked. The other one would be the Versetta Stone guy, Braden, right, Greg? Yeah. Oh, you... oh, I love it. That's awesome. That's it. And wait, this guy right here's gotta get pushed. Oh, there. Anytime it's nice and tight. Yeah. Tight is right, Greg. Up a little. Okay, come on down. Come on down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Dang. I tell you what, man, laying rock wool down is probably just as easy as laying other products, but these four by eight sheets go quick, 32 square foot at a time, and we had the help of Dan. Obviously, Dan's sweating. He's not your normal, come out and make sure we got the right product and we know how to use it. Look at the guy, he's sweating. He's helping us install it and we're making quick work of this, which is nice because I think the concrete guys are gonna wanna be right behind us. And that's nice for us too, because as you guys know, we don't normally get to work on concrete, just usually gravel, um, but this is a different situation. This is gonna be finished with probably like a luxury vinyl plank flooring. So we're not as concerned about putting scratches or scuffs or even if we dropped our hammer and put a tiny chip of, you know, defect in that concrete, we don't have to worry about it. So practically done with the house. And then I'm standing in the garage, two car garage. We'll get that whipped out pretty easy because there's no penetrations, um, no floor drains in this garage. It's going to slope to the door. I don't know how I feel about that, but it is what it is. It becomes a whole hassle when you start talking about floor drains for code. Concrete guys are a little mad at us because we didn't uh, give them much space to get their mesh into. Luckily we caught them before they were going to cut a column out of the way. They would have too, just so they can get that mesh in. But they're uh, coming right behind us, putting the plastic down and mesh over top of the rock wool. And that is so... The plumber can get in here and run all of his radiant tubes for the heat. And yeah, that was 
pretty darn easy to cut and install the rock wool. This is all of our scrap right there. So we were able to use obviously all the pieces because it doesn't have to be, joints aren't the end of the world. Like right here, this was kind of a pain, cutting all these little pieces around the pipes. But it worked pretty good. Brian, how I'm mad at you uh, at me right now for not having a post open for you. It's all right. <laughs> I like that. A little extra work. We like extra work around here, don't we, Greg? Just saying. Hey, at least we did all the uh, all the installation subgrade. That saved you time, didn't it? It did. Okay, there we go. had a 36 by 36 uh, foot mat, six inch on center, fucking three quarter inch rebar. No, the kids were using hand tools and stuff. Is that what finally bought one of those? Yeah. I think they've been They're like 800 bucks, aren't they? Are they 1200? 2800. Really? Ouch. Makita makes one. I don't think it's that bad. It won't. It won't. Stick. Won't last? No, no. Uh, the plumber that we use, I think he had, he was the one that was telling me about the Makita ones and stuff. And, hmm. You know, and all he was tying down was pucks. Interesting. Well, you would know, dude. You probably do it more than uh, more than I do. You know. Things down in eight inch walls. Can't get them in the wall. Can I? Can I put one on? I've never done it. <laughs> well, that worked there. Oh yeah. Stuff so easy. I, Greg, I'm thinking we're going to go into the concrete business. What do you think, buddy? I don't think so. No? Is no. It, it's not easy? It's not for us. Oh, okay. All right, fine. Here, you can have it back. It's all you. 